Just like the oven hallway in Metal Gear Solid 4 and the long ladder climb in Metal Gear Solid 3, Death Stranding is a game about attrition. Hideo Kojima wants to bottle that feeling, the slog of a journey, and sell it as a game. The results are mixed. Death Stranding is a game about the spaces in between. The world's gone to shit, disrupting the balance between life and death. The dead roam the land, attempting to drag the living to the beach, a kind of dream world that's like a purgatory at the edge of existence. The people who brave this terrifying world are forced to use bridge babies, or BBs, to sense the dead. These unborn babes are encased in an artificial womb, not dead, but not quite alive, existing in their own purgatory too. Schrodinger's tot. It's also a game quite literally about the spaces in between, the large swaths of landscape you travel across. Where most games are about shooting people in the head once you get to a destination, here the journey is the game. In fact, it took me 22 hours of playing before I even held a gun. Since we saw the very first trailer, people have been wondering what the hell Death Stranding is. Why is Norman Reedus holding a baby on the beach? Why is there all handprints everywhere? Why can I see his entire ass? It's not just story questions though. What even is the game bit of the game? I'll try and answer that for you in as simple terms as possible. Is it a stealth game? Sometimes. Is it an action game? Occasionally. For the most part, Death Stranding is a mountaineering game. Kojima has been talking up the online aspect, where structures and signs other players create appear in your world and vice versa. But it's in the traversal where the game does feel different. While there's the odd boss fight and small pockets of combat scattered throughout, the majority of this huge game is spent walking, planning and creating infrastructure to make subsequent journeys easier. You take control of Sam Bridges, Norman Reedus, as he attempts to spread chiral network across America. Travelling from the east coast to the west, you go to a terminal, accept a job and stack up cargo on your back and your limbs. You stack up as much as you can carry without toppling over like a human Jenga tower, then you head out into the weirdly Icelandic USA. Between jobs, you kick it in a private room and take showers, pull faces in a mirror and drink monster energy for some reason. You often see Norman Reedus full ass, sometimes he winks at the camera. Sometimes you take a shit and an advert for Reedus' motorbike show pops up on the shower curtain. Why do you take a shit? Because the game turns your turds, piss and sweat into different types of grenades. The poo one, ex-grenade number two, obviously. Hideo Kojima, a man in his 50s who once tweeted about his eggs looking like boobs, is known for having a pure all sense of humour and that's intact here. Hartman, he's a guy who has a heart attack every 21 minutes. Die hard man, he hasn't died. Dead man is made of dead people, obviously, you idiot. Mama, she's got a ghost baby. I was half expecting Mads Mikkelsen's character Cliff to be made of rock. Death Stranding wields metaphor like a cudgel and beats you over the head with it repeatedly. Sam Bridges, the man who's travelling the world to connect people, has a fear of being touched. That's just like, so deep man. Let me take another hit of this bong. <coughs> For the most part, the story is nonsense that's disguised as something profound, hiding in a sea of word soup. It's a game of telling, not showing, where characters will stand and talk at you for full 30 minute stretches. In the opening three hours, you're in control for a mere 30 minutes. At the end, there are back-to-back cutscenes that rival Metal Gear Solid 4's ending. It goes back to attrition again, but this time, it's your attention span and not your stamina that's being tested. When the cutscenes and endless exposition get out of the way though, there's an interesting, beautiful, unique, unfortunately repetitive game here. It's a game I'm glad exists, even though I'm not entirely enamoured with it. Remember how Metal Gear Solid 5 had a secret cutscene that would only trigger if every player in the entire world decided to get rid of their nukes in the online mode? It's a continuation of that idea here, where every interaction you make potentially impacts another player's journey. Let me explain the basics a minute. As mentioned, you stack yourself up with cargo. Depending on how you stack it, your weight shifts, though there's an option to auto-optimise all cargo. Obviously you use that every time because why wouldn't you? Sometimes you just need to get from A to B. Sometimes you need to do it in a time limit. Sometimes there are further restrictions, such as carrying it by hand, manually squeezing L2 or R2 to keep hold. And sometimes you need to keep the cargo flat, 
One side mission sees you literally delivering a pizza while it's still hot and flat. You're basically a Deliveroo employee at the end of the world. Once you've figured out how you want your cargo, you strap it to your back and you head off into that vast world. Get to the site I designated and build that post box, would you? You should have no trouble finding it if you check your map and compass from time to time. Like I said earlier, it's Icelandic. The end credits show that the developers shot on location in Iceland, but it's supposed to be the US. It bears no resemblance to the US at all, except for how fractured it is and how it only takes 22 hours to get a gun. There are rivers to cross, mountains to pass, and basalt to trundle across. Different surfaces affect your balance in different ways, and it's about finding the optimal route while maintaining your centre of gravity. Take on too steep a slope and you'll slip, damaging your cargo and traumatising Schrodinger's tot in the process. You can actually plot your route by bringing up your map and drawing it out. Later, you can predict weather patterns and wind direction to try and avoid timefall. Timefall is rain that ages things, fucking up your cargo with prolonged exposure. A bit like a Hermes driver. You also have to decide whether you want to try pass over obstacles, mountains, enemy camps and more, or take an indirect, safer route. Often this depends on the tools you have. If you have enough climbing anchors and extendable ladders, a mountain can be tamed. It's that famous video game marketing line again. You see that mountain over there? It's a prick. One huge river at the base of a waterfall was my personal nemesis. I had to clamber down on a cliffside to reach it. When I did, it seemed impassable. I couldn't build a bridge over it because I hadn't extended the network that far yet. So I had to try find another way around, ultimately scaling an almost sheer cliff to bypass it. Later, I came back to the river with zipline structures and built an easy way across both for me and for any wary traveller who might come up against it. Once you make it to the end of a mission, you get rated for the route you took, the time it took you to complete and the state of the cargo. You also accrue a currency called likes for your endeavours, both from NPCs and other players who use your structures and vehicles. Just like social media likes, these don't actually seem to serve any worth whatsoever, but they do make you feel warm and fuzzy inside. The rating system is similarly pointless, though occasionally it doles out some incremental upgrades to things such as balance and likes received. Unfortunately, there are a few occasions in the story where the rating system bumps up against the human drama. There's nothing quite like getting an S rank for incinerating a loved one. When you're driving along a road you've built, or firing yourself through the air in a series of linked up sci-fi zip lines, Death Stranding is excellent. You're rewarded for your patience, planning and foresight. The issue is, the reward is the ability to skip the core gameplay as much as possible to automate the walking through well laid equipment. Later, you can even use robots to cover minor deliveries for you too. It feels like it's building up towards a big payoff at the end, but it completely undermines itself once you get there. When you reach the west coast, you're forced to head back east again. Only now, time fall storms have ruined all your equipment. Instead of this being an opportunity to marvel at your work and trace a route back through it, it's just a 50 minute slog back to the other side of the map. Seems like a missed opportunity. Death Stranding does have its moments though. Because it's mostly walking around a vast environment while listening to Hideo Kojima's Spotify playlist, action sequences are extremely tense when they do happen. One of the main bands of enemies are mules. These were Deliveroo drivers like you once, but they forgot the reason they were doing it, and now they just steal shit and deliver it to themselves. They have beacons dotted around their camps that ping your cargo, then they head out in a van to mess you up. Combat is a simple one button affair, though you can also launch luggage at people's faces. Most of the time it's best to try escape. In the 44 hours I played, probably less than 4 of those were spent fighting, escaping and sneaking. Elsewhere, you have to creep past the ghosts that appear in the rain, using your BB to slowly sense them with a robotic arm attached to your suit. This is just a case of creeping carefully and changing direction is needed. Later, shit and piss grenades and a melee attack make them almost feel pointless. The tension falls away. If you are grabbed, you enter a boss arena where you can throw grenades at an oil dog an oil whale or an oil squid while jumping over rooftops. At some specific story points, you're whisked away to other places for exciting one-off action sequences. These moments are huge standouts, but they come so late that I imagine a huge portion of players will have fallen off by then. The same goes for some of the most interesting equipment. Exoskeletons, a cargo carrier that you can ride like a snowboard, those zip lines, a harpoon gun and more. They were introduced too late. If you do manage to hold out, you will be rewarded with flashes of brilliance. It's just that those flashes are buried as deep as the core story is buried in the endless dialogue. And as meaningful as it wants to be, this is still a game in which you can equip and unequip your penis so you can piss out Red Bull. Still, good stuff is waiting for you beyond that piss, beyond the shit grenades, 
Beyond the Ride with Norman Reedus advert unceremoniously plastered in a game universe where I didn't see a single television set is just a test of attrition. Thanks for watching. For more on Death Stranding, head on over to VG247.com or why not check out one of these videos?